Hey everyone, we're going to do Cope Alleman or B12 today. So set yourself up on your desk or study area or the kitchen table, clear off clutter, get a cup of tea and get your hardback and pen and we'll go. So vitamin B12 is found in small amounts in all animal tissues, but it's completely absent from foods of vegetable origin. So to think of cobalamin, imagine a corn on the cob and imagine peeling off the outer layers or membranes. And this kind of looks like the myelin sheath, which helps speed up and transmit nerve impulses. So when we think of cobalamin, it sounds a little bit like the precious mineral cobalt. So there's some cobalt, and indeed there is cobalt present in vitamin B12. And we can see there all animal sources, um, eggs, mackerel, meat, clams, prawns. So the properties of B12 are almost identical, very, very similar to folic acid, except for the fact that B12 is destroyed by strong acids and folates are less destroyed. So to summarize these properties, vitamin B12 is water soluble, therefore it is fat soluble, fat um, insoluble. It's destroyed in an acid and alkali environment it's relatively heat stable at 100 degrees Celsius, and it's generally unstable when exposed to light. What are the implications of that for cooking? So looking at the sources of B12 cobalamin, all of the sources are exclusively from animal sources. Now write down the answer to the following question in your hardback. What is the implication of the above statement for vegans? Pause the video and then continue. Vegan sources of vitamin B12. Vegans need to supplement their diet as B12 is found only in animal foods. Vegans get their B12 from bran flakes. You know, your bran flakes that you have for your breakfast, like Kellogg's bran flakes or little version or super value version. And they're all fortified with vitamins and minerals. So you'll often see B12 written at the front of the packet. Yeast extract, textured vegetable protein, and vitamin supplements. Can you name any other sources in your hardback? You might not be able to see this picture very clearly. We have fortified cereals, fortified juice, unsweetened soy milk, fortified tofu, low fat milk, whole fat yogurt, Swiss cheese, vitamin water, eggs, and whey powder. So vegan vitamin 12 sources mainly come from supplements. And it's interesting to note that in farming, farm feed is often supplemented with B12. So the animal sources of B12 are things like prawns and clams and mussels are quite high. White fish and oily fish, liver, offal, uh, sardines, mackerel, herring, eggs, and meat. So here's an activity for you to try now. If one ounce is 26 grams, some books say 27 grams, some round it up to 25, but I think it's around 26.4. You can double check that yourself. With this chart is a good chart to, to tell you how much, um, how many micrograms are per you know, a portion of each of these foods. So clams, we've got 84 micrograms per three ounces. So we could multiply three ounces by 26 and we get 78 ounces, 78 grams. So work that out. How many um, micrograms are in a gram measurement of liver, trout, tuna canned, salmon, fortified cereal and clams. And also to note that here micrograms are written MCG. We normally write micrograms as UG. So part two of this activity is to comment on the B12 content of the, pre of the foods on this slide and the previous. Just to make a comment about um, maybe which one is higher, which one is lower. And the reason why I'm giving you this activity is it's very similar to the kind of chart and question that you might get in question one, higher level paper. So just to practice that ability to comment on data that you haven't seen before is a good skill set that you 
from the fear leaving search. Looking next at the functions of B12. B12 is essential for red blood cell formation, it's got a neurological function and DNA synthesis. So we need um, B12 for the formation of red blood corpuscles, also to help with the, the myelin sheath around the nerves, that's the neurological function. And also what's not mentioned here is for the treatment or for the prevention of pernicious anemia, and we will be going into that. Now, summary of functions of B12, the metabolism of fats. So all of the B vitamins have, have some role in metabolism of macronutrients. Also, it works with folate or folic acid in its synthetic form. Folate is the natural form and helps to maintain the myelin sheath. So let's look at each of those in detail. B12 is necessary for the metabolism of fatty acids and of folic acid. So fatty acids are normally broken down into three fatty acids, and, um, or three, a triglyceride basically, which is three glycerols and one fatty acid. So every fat molecule, and we'll be going to look at soon, is made up of three fatty acids and glycerol. In fact, that's written there. Okay. Next function is for the production of red blood cells. Vitamin B12 is extremely important in the manufacture of red blood cells and it's assisted by folic acid and iron. So you can see in the first picture we've got a normal amount of red blood cells and the second picture an anemic uh, amount of red blood cells. So there's different types of anemia. It can, do, it can be to do with the shape uh, or the size of the red blood cell it can, or it can be to do with the volume of, of the red blood cell. Next we need vitamin B12 for um, the myelin sheath. And here's an image of a nerve cell, and this outer area here is what B12 helps to make. So it's necessary for the formation of myelin sheaths, which insulates nerve fibres and ensures a healthy nervous system. So literally, you might get a shaky leg or pins and needles or a little bit of a tremor or just delayed reactions, tired, fatigue, pale, irritable, cranky, all of these things from not having enough B12. Um, women often take it for premenstrual tension. Now, next, we have um, a video that you can watch. Now, I'm not going to get you to do that now because then you'd stop this video. So I'm going to keep it going and then go back at the very end. So the deficiency of B12 um, is common. B12 deficiency is common. And it can happen due to loads of um, reasons. I know someone who has B12 deficiency because he's celiac. So he just doesn't, he hasn't absor absorbed nutrients very well over his life cycle. It was discovered he was celiac later on in life. So what's, what's associated with deficiency is tiredness, irritability. It's also linked with neurotube defects, NTDs, such as spina bifida and encephal palsy, and delayed nerve impulses. Also um, to note that vegans and vegetarians are at a high risk of deficiency nerve degeneration here as well and general poor development of red blood cells. So the recommended daily allowance of vitamin B12 is quite technically quite low um, but obviously if you're vegan or vegetarian you've got less chance of getting B12 in your diet so supplementation is not uncommon. Children require 0.7 micrograms to 1 microgram a day, adolescents or adults 1.4, pregnant women 1.6 and lactating women. And just to note again that 1 microgram UG is equal to, equal to a thousand, 1 thousand of a milligram. And then this is our homework question. Your homework question is due tomorrow at uh, the same time that we would normally have class. But I realise that things are a little bit uneven at the moment. So if you can try to get it to me at 5pm, look, if you can't and you do it on Friday, I'll still get it. We, I will be encouraging you to upload your work onto OneDrive in a dedicated folder with your name so that I can keep all of your work in the one place. Otherwise, everything gets lost on Edmodo. So you need to um, give an account of B12 cobalamin and refer to the sources in the diet, properties and biological functions. Sources in the diet, 
it's all animal sources, and you would say that it's lacking in, in from lacking in vegetable sources. You would give the actual examples, maybe state that it's highest in one type of food and lowest in another, and you'll know the answer to that based upon the previous activity. Properties, I would say four properties. Biological functions, three. And you can, even though it doesn't say to, to talk about the deficiency, you might indicate the deficiency in your functions to, for a full higher level answer. Okay, and then that's that. So going back here to the video that I want you to watch on pernicious anemia. So when a person has pernicious anemia, um, B12 is not absorbed fully in the large intestine. So why is that? I want you just to watch the video and figure, that, figure out why. And to remember that the symptoms of pernicious anemia are tiredness, breathlessness and poor blood clotting. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this video, if you did. And if you have any suggestions how I can make these videos better and um, easier to understand, am I going too fast, too slow? Um, what is working for you? What isn't working for you? Please, please get back to me so I can improve. And I wish you um, all the best on this day. And I hope you learned an awful lot about vitamin B12 and you feel secure in that topic today. Bye.